Listen, man, I make over 30 an hour. I got a damn good paying job. Listen, if a nigga was to tell me at 18 years old, if a nigga said, yo, Diz, at the age of 36, you're going to be making over $30 an hour and you're going to be struggling, I would have laughed in his fucking face, man. For real. I would have laughed in his face. You couldn't have told me that at 18 years old. I would have thought that I'd be living like a king. I don't live outside my means. When, when I say I'm struggling, that's just to pay bills and to buy food. Inflation, the, the economy, everything is fucked up. There's no middle class anymore. We're literally the working poor. You have the working poor, and then you have the filthy, rotten, fucking rich. Like something needs to change. Something needs to give. We can't fucking live like this. This is not a way to live. Welcome back, folks, to another episode of Pissed Off with David. It's your favorite place for humor, rage, and a good, honest dose of what the heck is going on in the world. You know, ever since I started doing this, and let me tell you, the list of things that piss me off just keeps getting longer. But today, today we're diving deep into something that is getting real. And I mean real for so many of us. The idea of being the working poor. Yeah, you heard me. The working poor, and no... That's not just some dramatic term cooked up to make people feel bad. It's real. It's happening. And let me tell you, it's pissing people off everywhere. I'm talking about the people who bust their asses for a living, working every damn day, putting in those hours, only to get smacked in the face by the cost of living. You know, back in the day, and I'm talking like way back, if you were making over 30 bucks an hour, you were practically swimming in champagne and calling your cat Mr. Snuggles in your fancy ass penthouse. But today... You're making 30 bucks an hour and you're out here wondering if you can afford eggs or gas, not both. Because God forbid you want to have breakfast and get to work without living in your car. It's like, what happened, right? Inflation, the economy, and let's not forget the biggest freaking culprit, the disappearing middle class. Gone. Poof. Like a magic trick, but way more depressing and without the glittery outfits. The middle class folks is disappearing faster than my patients at a bloody DMV. Here you have this gentleman on TikTok and he sums it up perfectly. He's out here making over 30 an hour, working a full-time job and still struggling to pay bills and buy food. And before some of you start rolling your eyes like, well, David, maybe he needs to budget better. Let me stop you right there. It's not about budgeting when the price of everything around you is skyrocketing while your paycheck is standing still, twiddling its thumbs, wondering what the hell happened. The dude was like, we're literally the working poor. And that hit hard. We are talking about people who work full-time jobs, 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Hell, some of you out there are juggling two or three jobs, and it's still not enough. Not enough for what? Not enough for your rent, your food, your health care, your, your kid's education. It's like, why even freaking bother at this point? The system's broken and nobody seems to care except the people who are getting crushed by it. This guy goes on to say, you have the working poor, and then you have the filthy, rotten, freaking rich. And listen, I'm not here to hate on anyone's success. You've got money? Good for you. But don't sit there in your marble mansion sipping a $1,000 bottle of wine and pretend like you get it. Because guess what? You don't. Not even close. The divide between the rich and everyone else, it's a freaking canyon now. And this isn't just me throwing a tantrum for the hell of it. This is reality. There used to be this idea, this American dream bullshit, where if you worked hard, you'd get ahead. Well... I'm calling BS on that right now. It's not about how hard you work anymore because people are working their asses off. And what do they have to show for it? Jack freaking squat. And you know what really gets me? This idea that something has to change, something needs to give. But here we are stuck in this same freaking cycle. It's like we're all hamsters on a wheel running faster and faster, but never getting anywhere. Rent keeps going up. Groceries are basically luxury items now. And don't even get me started on gas prices. But your paycheck? Yeah. Yeah. That thing's on life support. I mean, how did we get here? How did we go from a time where 30 bucks an hour could get you a nice house, a couple of vacations a year, maybe a decent retirement plan, to now where you're counting change at the checkout line, hoping to God your card doesn't get declined because your rent just drained your account? Something's broken, folks. And it's not us. It's the freaking system. We didn't break it, but we're sure as hell the ones paying for it, and people are getting pissed off. Hell, I'm pissed off just talking about it. 
I'll tell you what, if you're out there grinding every day, doing everything right and still struggling, it's not your fault. Don't let anybody tell you it is. This isn't a personal failure. This is a failure of the whole damn system. And it needs to change like yesterday. All right, that's it for part one. In the next episode, we're going to dive even deeper because trust me, I'm just getting warmed up here. We'll talk more about this disappearing middle class and what we can actually do to push back against this crap. But for now, take a deep breath, maybe pour yourself a drink and get ready because this conversation is just getting started. Now let's break this down. We've got inflation going through the roof. Basic things like groceries, gas, housing are eating away at people's paychecks. Wages, stagnant. Meanwhile, CEOs and corporations are pulling in profits like they've got a cheat code for life. There's this massive imbalance, right? The top 1% is laughing all the way to the bank and the rest of us, we're wondering if we can afford to get a tire fixed without missing rent. It's bananas. I know some of you listening are thinking, but David, this has always been the way things are. And sure, we've always had the rich, the middle class, and the poor, but what's happening now, it's like the middle class is being wiped out. Slowly, quietly, but surely, the gap is widening and nobody's doing a thing about it. You've got two groups now, the working poor and the ultra rich. And the problem is, the working poor aren't just some small section of the population anymore. It's becoming the majority. And these aren't lazy people. These are nurses, teachers, construction workers, delivery drivers, people doing the essential jobs that literally keep the world spinning. But we've set up a system where no matter how hard they work, they're stuck. I mean, you ever feel like no matter what you do, no matter how many hours you put in, you're still one emergency away from disaster. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. So what's the fix? How do we even start tackling something this big? Well, let's break it down step by step because I'm not just here to rant. We need solutions. First off, we've got to start by talking about wages. I'm not just saying raise the minimum wage like it's some magic wand, but we need to have a serious conversation about what a living wage actually looks like. What's the point of working 40 hours a week if you still can't afford to live? The idea that someone working full-time should have to choose between feeding their family or paying rent is absurd. And don't even get me started on healthcare. That's a whole other can of worms we'll tackle another day. But we're not going to sit here and just wait for the government or corporations to suddenly grow a conscience. That's not how the world works. Change happens when people get loud. When people demand it. If we want wages that actually reflect the cost of living... We have to start pushing for it. And I'm not just talking about striking or protesting, though those things matter. I'm talking about voting. I'm talking about supporting policies that benefit working people. I'm talking about holding your representatives accountable. We've got power, folks. It's time we start using it. Next up, let's talk about housing. You ever look at housing prices and think, did I miss the memo where we all became millionaires overnight because the way rents and mortgages are looking these days, you'd think we were all pulling in six figures. But here's the kicker. We're not. And the affordable housing crisis? It's getting worse. The rich are buying up properties like it's Monopoly, turning homes into investments instead of, you know, places for people to actually live. Meanwhile, regular folks are being pushed out of cities, towns, entire regions because they just can't afford to stay. So what's the solution? We need policies that prioritize affordable housing, rent control, more public housing options, incentives for building affordable units, and Look, I get it. Policy is a boring word that makes people's eyes glaze over, but this is what it comes down to. If we don't start advocating for real, systemic changes, nothing's going to improve. Lastly, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the rich. And no, I'm not saying we grab pitchforks and storm the mansions. What I'm saying is we need to take a hard look at how wealth is being hoarded at the top while the rest of us are stuck scrambling for scraps. It's no secret that... Uh, that... The tax system is tilted in favor of the wealthy. If you're making millions, you've got accountants finding every loophole in the book to make sure you pay as little as possible. Meanwhile, regular folks are getting taxed on every paycheck like clockwork. I'm not an economist, but I can tell you this much. If we don't start making the rich pay their fair share, we're going to keep spiraling down this path where the rich get richer and everyone else is left holding the bag. We need to start closing those tax loopholes, raising taxes on the ultra wealthy, and redistributing that wealth in a way that benefits everyone, not just the top 1%. Look, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's going to happen overnight. But here's the thing. If we don't start fighting for this now, if we don't start demanding better, nothing will change. And we'll be right here 5, 10, 20 years from now, 
having the same conversation about how the system's broken, about how we're still struggling to make ends meet while the rich sit back and count their money. It's so here's my challenge to all of you listening. Get involved, use your voice, whether it's voting, whether it's organizing, whether it's simply talking to your friends and family about these issues. Do something, because if we all sit back and wait for someone else to fix it, we'll be waiting forever. All right, that's all I've got for today. I hope this lit a fire under you like it did under me. We're in this together, folks. And if we keep making noise, if we keep pushing for real change, maybe, just maybe, we'll start to see it. Until next time, stay fired up, stay vocal, and stay pissed off in all the right ways. We've got work to do.